Hi guys, it's me, Chazzer HD, and welcome to another episode of the podcast where today, after the chaotic and crazy and epic German Grand Prix at Hockenheim on Sunday, we are now going to preview this weekend's 2019 Hungarian Grand Prix, the last race before the summer break for me. 2019 has, I think overall, ha has been a good season so far. And I think in Hungary, we are probably not going to have too bad of a Grand Prix. Won't be as good as Hockenheim, of course. But I think we are in for definitely an interesting Grand Prix, especially when it comes to the fight for victory. So definitely look out for this Grand Prix this weekend. But of course, let's bring on my guest, as always, Niblo, to the podcast. And Nib, after that race on Sunday, I can guarantee that you're definitely looking forward to this race. Well, perhaps maybe not looking forward to Hungary as much because Hungary, of course, isn't renowned for its great races unless there is some wet weather, which I'm not entirely sure if there is going to be any wet weather around for the Hungarian Grand Prix. But uh, yeah, still, you have to be looking forward to having another F1 race. But quite frankly, I think I've I've had enough of F1 for a little bit. You know, that the last three races has taken a bit out of me, you know, especially the last Grand Prix, the, the German Grand Prix. Still can't get over how good of a race that was. And after that, there was too much action. There was too much for me. We need a break. But you know what? I'm sure by it come by Friday, I'll be raring and happy to have F1 back. Yeah, I think... If the summer break, you know, has started now, it would have been a perfect send-off. But, of course, Hungary is uh, going to be on the calendar for this weekend's race. But I think that's the, the only reason, of course, the summer break doesn't start now. is because they just about, thank God, saved Hockenheim from going off the calendar for 2019. It's a great job for keeping on the calendar and having the great race that we did. But now... Let's get into the team-by-team -team preview of what we think will happen this weekend at the Hungaro Ring. So, let's start off with Mercedes, who had possibly their worst Grand Prix since they came into the sport in 2010. It was terrible. They were leading 1 and 2, and then by the time they put dry tyres on for the first time and the rain started to fall again, everything fell apart. They couldn't do anything right, nor could the drivers and they finished ninth of Lewis Hamilton because the two Alfa Romeos got disqualified. And of course, Valtteri Bottas crashed out of the Grand Prix. Disaster for them. But of course, because their car is still very, very good as it was during the Hockenheim weekend before uh, race day. I think at Hungary, where the car is probably going to be performing better because I think the track will be better suited for that car. I think they will be definitely responding in a very strong way to how they performed on race day at Hockenheim. I don't think they'll get, you know, trounced by Red Bull or something like that. But I think they're definitely going to be very keen to respond. I know Lewis Hamilton is because he has cancelled, I believe, any media stuff uh, before the Hungarian Grand Prix because he is so keen to get Hockenheim out of the system and respond in Hungary. And I think they will in a pretty big way. Nib, for this team, uh, well, they're going to respond at Hungary. We know that. Do you think it will be a big response or do you still think that they're going to have, say, some competition from, say, Red Bull? Well, it's certainly going to be a bit of an easier weekend, I'd assume, for Mercedes at Hungary. You know, the track, of course, the first sector doesn't 100 percent suit them because it's well what uh two corners and two straights so that will favor ferrari in that part of the track but then the rest of the track is mainly um there's what there's one high speed corner and then the rest of them are me medium and slow speed corners so that really should favor mercedes and of course red bull who have been relatively decent through the medium and slow speed corners in qualifying but of course that is Ferrari's Achilles heel, but Mercedes, they have to bounce back. And being that the world-class team that they are, the best run team in the sport, you wouldn't expect anything less from them unless there is something that catastrophically goes wrong, something banzai crazy like happened in Germany with mixed conditions like we had. I don't see anything really going wrong for Mercedes. You know, <laughs> 
it's it's rare that we speak about a bad weekend for Mercedes, and the last time that we've we've probably seen a bad weekend from Mercedes was when you know Rosberg was still in the team, and that was what twenty sixteen. It's been quite some time that Mercedes have had a have had a poor weekend. So you know, before people say, "Oh, Mercedes, rah rah rah," you know, give Mercedes a break. That they've done pretty well, I think. You know, they haven't done too bad. Um, so I'd expect Mercedes to bounce back, and I'd, ex- I'd once again expect a very strong performance by the Silver Arrows. And of course, their upgrades I'd expect to be running a little bit better. And I think that they have a, had to have the car a little bit more dialed into the circuit than what they had at Hockenheim. Absolutely. And when it comes to those upgrades, I think we'll see here at Hungary whether they are, you know, a big improvement or not, because I think it is going to be more telling around a track like Hungary than it will be at Hockenheim. So, yeah, I'll be uh, interested to see how they get on with that. And, yeah, they're definitely going to respond big time to what happened at their home Grand Prix. Next up is Ferrari, of course, at Hockenheim uh, after... Probably the worst qualifying of their season so far. Even though Charles Leclerc ended up in a wall. They had a great race with Sebastian Vettel coming from last to P2. Great result for Ferrari. Hopefully a good confidence boost for him and the team going into Hungary. And Ferrari also do have an upgrade for the Hungarian Grand Prix. So if that does work for them in terms of closing the gap aerodynamically to Mercedes and Red Bull then Ferrari are, of course, going to be on the up and up. But let's remember, this is Ferrari. Any time they get a chance to mess up, normally they do. And also, the Hungaro ring is not going to be, even if their upgrade does help a bit, it's not going to be a track that's going to allow them to go for the race win. Because, as Nib said, after the first sector, it's all about downforce. And Ferrari don't have enough downforce to to compete and i think especially on race day if it is dry and hot like it you know can be at times at the hungaro ring i think ferrari are probably going to struggle quite a bit and if they are going to get onto the podium then something weird is going to have to happen nib for ferrari uh what do you think after hockenheim what do you think is going to happen for them this weekend and do you think the upgrade can push them a bit closer well i think this is going to sound a bit silly what i'm about to say but i think in terms of their pace especially on saturday once again very encouraging for for ferrari it seems as if in qualifying they've certainly closed that gap to mercedes it doesn't seem as if they're losing as much time through the corners it seems as if they've been able to put a little bit more downforce in the car which has compromised the top line speed too much, but their engine, of course, in qualifying, still gains them a lot, a lot of time. They don't use that engine mo- engine mode in the race, of course, but it gains them heaps of time in qualifying. And if they add more downforce to the car, who knows? They could be a little bit closer to Mercedes once more. I don't think they'll be as strong as what they were at Hockenheim. You know, Hockenheim, massive straight, a lot more fast corners where... Um, Ferrari do have an edge on Mercedes. If you go have a look at the data that um, Formula One have published and other journalists fr- who cover the sport have published, Ferrari have an edge in high-speed corners over Mercedes. So not not there being not as many high-speed corners at, at, Ho- at um, Budapest is going to hurt Ferrari, of course, and they're being less straight, of course. But of course... At Budapest, it's all about taking pole position. And if you take pole position, you're more than likely going to win the race because it's so hard to overtake um, at Budapest. Of course, most people will often refer to it, and you're sure you'll hear people refer to it during the weekend. It is Monaco without the barriers. And I think we'll see that to be true during the whole weekend. So pole position will be very, very crucial for who overtakes it. And I don't particularly see Ferrari being able to take pole position um, in Budapest. But just going back onto their performance at Hockenheim, of course, fantastic drive by Sebastian Vettel from P20 on the grid to P2. Fantastic result. And he, he just seemed happy again, which was which was nice to see because it's been far too often that we've seen a, a, a glum-looking Sebastian Vettel, a not-happy-looking Sebastian Vettel. And hopefully... This could potentially be the start of a turnaround 
of um of luck and and some fortune for Sebastian Vettel. Yes, hopefully it is because even though, of course, I railed on the guy plenty of times in the last year for mistakes that he deserves to be criticised for. I do want to see Sebastian Vettel at his best. I absolutely do, because Sebastian Vettel at his best with Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton up there is the best thing for Formula 1, of course, and also Charles Leclerc. So, hopefully, and I think Sebastian will carry that confidence through to Hungary, because normally at Hungary, Sebastian is pretty good. He's always in that top three or four on the grid. So, I think Sebastian is going to be pretty good this weekend and doing well for Ferrari and hopefully he does. Now let's go on to Red Bull Racing who of course won in Hockenheim their first ever win at that track and it was a great great weekend of course getting second and fourth on the grid for qualifying and then winning the race on the Sunday and Max Verstappen you have to say at the moment looks not perfect but very, very, very strong in that car. That car is improving all the time. And Max Verstappen is right now maintaining a very, very high level of performance. Now, as we come to Hungary, where Red Bull for me are going to be, with Max Verstappen at least, very, very competitive. I think Red Bull are absolutely going to be racing for the victory. I have no doubt about that whatsoever. It will be tough for them... Uh, to win because as Nib said pole is very important here and because the Honda power unit doesn't quite have enough in qualifying to give Red Bull everything it needs to go for pole that might affect them when it comes to the Grand Prix on the Sunday you know trying to possibly go for the win but without a doubt in qualifying and the race I expect Max Verstappen to be at the very least in P3 because I think that car with him in it, around the Hungara ring, is going to be a very, very uh, good prospect for the weekend. Pierre Gasly, hopefully he can improve on what was, a, I think, a mostly poor weekend. Qualifying was, I'll say, good at best, but, you know, the crash in practice too, and then the race where he didn't really go anywhere, it wasn't good enough. And especially with Daniel Kvyat getting a podium, uh, Gasly's career at Red Bull now is looking seriously under threat. So hopefully Pierre can provide the performance he did last year in the Toro Rosso at the Hungaro ring. But we'll have to see what he does. He certainly will have a good enough car to be, say, good like he was at Silverstone at Hungary. Uh, for Red Bull Nib, again, considering they won the last Grand Prix and with Max Verstappen, they're looking very good. Do you think they are contenders for victory again, but this time in Hungary? Absolutely, Red Bull are contenders with the way that uh, Supermax is driving at the moment. You can't count them out whatsoever. Of course, maybe if he gets a bit of a better start, he might be in an even better position to win the race. Of course, referring to his awful starts, which he had at Hockenheim and at Austria, and somehow he won both the races. But Red Bull, they just look very good. Very good. Of course, as I've talked about many times on the podcast, Red Bull right there along with Mercedes in terms of running a race team. And that showed Red Bull didn't get a call wrong the whole entire race in, with Max's strategy. They absolutely nailed it and, and gave him a very comfortable race um, to able to win the Grand Prix. But for Pierre Gasly, oh dear. Oh dear, Pierre. He, after what was a very promising um, result at Silverstone, Back to old Pierre Gasly at Hockenheim. It just wasn't good enough. He made too many mistakes in the wet, which, of course, is very easy to do. We've seen plenty of other drivers make mistakes, but if you're driving at Red Bull, you can't be making the amount of mistakes that he was making, especially in the early stages when it was wet. Um, he's nowhere near Max again. You know, it was he was looking solid. He was looking pretty decent in qualifying on Saturday, but it just went downhill on Sunday. And, of course, with Kvyat... Um, finishing third and you know <laughs> Alban absolutely pulling off some banging overtakes on on Gasly on a couple of occasions it's not looking good for Pierre Gasly and his future at Red Bull of course if he can put in a strong performance once again at Hockenheim there'll be two good performances in the last three races so for Pierre's sake I'm sure he'll be hoping that he can go back to what he was doing at Silverstone but for Red Bull and for their weekend at Budapest 
you, I don't think you can. How can you rule out Red Bull at the moment? You, you just absolutely can't. They're so strong in the race. It's going to be pretty, it's re- relatively warm once again in Budapest. I think it's going to be about 26 on race day. Uh, there is rain predicted on Friday and then on the Monday. So who knows, the weather could be moving in a little bit quicker or a little bit later. So we could see some mixed conditions for Budapest once more, which would be fantastic because a wet race at Budapest is fantastic. We've seen that in a 2014 and also 2015, was it? I can't remember what other year, but one of one other year, of course, along with 2014, where Daniel Ricciardo won. I would like to mention that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but Red Bull, yeah, I how can you say that they couldn't win the Grand Prix? Max is driving so, so well and such a high level at the moment. He's current, he's clearly, at the moment, the best driver on the grid. Um, you know, Hamilton, of course, is driving very well, um, although some might not say that after Hockenheim. Two very um, out-of-character mistakes by Hamilton, but Max is driving at a higher level than Lewis at the moment. Lewis hasn't driven at his absolute best so far this season, and Max, at the moment, is driving at such a high level that um, it's going to be pretty hard to keep it up. But if there is one person who can do it, it's going to be uh, Super Max, as I like to refer him to at the moment. So I think, once again, Red Bull, well well within a chance of winning the Hungarian Grand Prix. Absolutely. And I think what the great thing is uh, with Red Bull, they've gone back to how they were at the end of 2018. And that's what made the end of 2018 so exciting because Red Bull and Race Day were so quick and they'd always get in there for the race victory, even at races like Brazil, where you didn't think that was going to happen. So at the moment with Max Verstappen, and as Nib said, you can't really deny he Max Verstappen has been the best driver um, in 2019. He, he really has, because Lewis Hamilton this season has driven well, but Max Verstappen has basically been outperforming the car most times this season, if not every single time this season, and hasn't really made a mistake this season. He's been so, so good, and his performance at Hockenheim was very, very good. I know he did make that small error on the medium compound tyres when it started to rain when he was on slick tyres, but he was so, so good, so, so good at Hockenheim. And going into Hungary... As Niv said, can you really argue against Red Bull at least being there for victory in the Grand Prix? But now, let's get on to the midfield and start off with Renault, who had a terrible weekend at Hockenheim. Qualifying was not that good. The race was looking good until Daniel Ricciardo had an engine failure and Nico Hülkenberg bottled a podium, a possible podium position. And... I think after that result and after the results of McLaren and also Toro Rosso who have now overtook Renault for P5 in the Constructors, I think Renault for this season, when it comes to P4 in the Constructors, I think Renault are done. I I don't see how Renault will beat McLaren this season because even in, say, two of the last, I don't know, six or seven races, Renault have been, at times very very quick but have still at times been outscored by mclaren for example silverstone renault were quicker mclaren still outscored them so i don't see how renault can finish p4 on the constructors anymore they just don't have enough consistency as a team things aren't working drivers aren't performing absolutely at their best every race at times they are driving very very well uh ricardo since Canada was driving very well, but in Hockenheim, it was an off weekend. Hulkenberg is kind of here and there. And things, again, at Renault just aren't working for them. And I don't see how they can contend with McLaren in the constructors. So for them, they have to try and get P5 and hold on to it. Because it would be an even worse disaster if they finished below the top five in the constructors. I think, honestly, if they finish in fifth, this season has been a disaster because they had to finish in fourth. They had to in 2019. And I I don't see how they do anymore. Uh, But going into Hungary, I think things will be better for Renault because I think it will be a more settled weekend 
Uh, there'll be more, you know, things that will be known for them in terms of the weather forecast, track conditions, and I think they'll probably get to know the car a bit better around this circuit. And I think the two drivers are better at this circuit as a combination than they are at Hockenheim in terms of their past history. So I think they'll probably have a better weekend, but I don't think it'll be great. I, I don't think it'll be great. I think they'll still probably be outscored by McLaren and end up with maybe some points, but not enough to really, you know, make them very, very happy. But Nib, uh, for Renault and your favorite driver's team, um, what are your thoughts of Renault right now? Are you, when it comes to P4 and the constructors, are you really done with them or do you think there is still hope? Very frustrated at the moment I am with Renault. Um, you know, just haven't capitalized on on the chances that they've had to get really good points and ultimately that's why they are so far behind mclaren now in p4 for the, for the constructors and yeah i'd probably have to agree with you it's going to be very hard for renault to get p4 in the constructors now mclaren have such a lead over everyone else because they've just been more consistent done a better job than everyone else in the midfield it's it's just that simple you know even when it looks like renault were going to have a fantastic result with nico hulkenberg Boom, both cars are out the race. And then Carlos Sainz gets fifth place. Was he, did Sainz finish in fifth? Uh, yes, he did. Yeah, so a good baggage of points for McLaren. Of course, they only had one car that finished. Norris retired um, with some sort of issue. Of course, Ricardo retired. Great to see that again. Never seen that before. Um, you know, with an exhaust issue, I think it was in the end. Um, so hopefully nothing has damaged, um, nothing there has damaged in terms of the front, sorry, the front wing, the engine. Um, but yeah, just very frustrated with Renault at the moment. It seems as if they're just, their car isn't connected. There seems to be disagreement between the drivers on the direction in which the car is going in terms of the development. Um, Hulkenberg is saying that the car is going forward, whereas Ricardo is disagreeing. There seems to be a bit of disharmony in that, in that front, um, they've got two great drivers. I think they've got a pretty good team principal and serial beatball. But I think everyone else, everywhere else is just lacking behind. They don't, they don't quite have the car that they need to be the best team in the midfield at the moment. It really is showing. And at a track like Hungary, where you need a very good car, um, with the front and rear not being exactly connected too well on the Renault, I don't really see them having a tremendous weekend um, at Hungary, if I'm perfectly honest. Yeah, um, I, I said with um, with Renault for this weekend, I think things will improve, but that it's not going to be anything that can be called great. And I think if you go back and look at practice on Friday at Hockenheim, the one thing I noticed with the Renault is that it had way, way too much understeer in some of the corners it, it didn't look like it was really you know getting into the track it, it, it did not look to me to be a good car and I think to be honest Nico Hulkenberg him being p4 was more so just him being so good in the wet I don't think the car was necessarily being that great I think it was just him at the time uh, before he made the error not making errors and getting good pace out the car but I don't think the Renault fundamentally and I said this since pre-season testing that the Renault when I w was at testing, the Renault fundamentally just doesn't look like that good of a car. It doesn't wow you. It doesn't look like it's, you know, well hooked up to the track. And it still doesn't look that way. And it's been too many times this season where Renault, you know, at, say, a race like Canada or China or Silverstone, where they look great and you think, if they can do that on a consistent basis then they are absolutely in the right place for the rest of the season. But then they go and have a race like Hockenheim or Austria. Way too many times that is happening. And yeah, in Hungary, I think they are still going to be probably behind this team, McLaren, who had a bit of a chaotic Grand Prix in Germany. Carlos Sainz, of course, finished in P5. I think Carlos Sainz, honestly, he drove so well and was a bit unlucky to finish in P5. I think he could have been on the podium, honestly, in his McLaren. 
Uh, Lando Norris, of course, had an issue. I think it was a gear sync issue uh, for Lando Norris in the Grand Prix. Uh, but to come away with 10 points, considering that the McLaren, I don't even think was the fastest uh, midfield car at Hockenheim, was very, very good for them. Very good, because their main rivals are most likely going to be Renault. I know Toro Rosso got up to fifth, but that's only because they collected 23 points at Hockenheim, because Kvyat finished in third and Albert finished in P6. So that was great for McLaren and in Hungary. As long as they have a race like last year where Fernando Alonso finished in P8 and they outscore Renault, I think that's all that matters because I don't think the McLaren car is actually getting any better, to be honest. I don't think they're actually improving the car. I think that's most likely because they're already focusing on the 2020 car. And that is a great um, a show by McLaren to still be scoring great amount of points, even though they're not really improving the car. So in Hungary... As long as they score the most amount of points out of any of the midfield runners, I think that's all they can really do, even if the car's not that good during the weekend. Because you have to say, um, if they can do that going into the summer break, how can McLaren really be stopped from finishing in P4 on the Constructors? I don't see how they are. Nib, uh, for McLaren, uh, do you echo what I've said there? And uh, in Hungary, do you think they are going to be, say, in and around the top 10? Uh, yeah, I very much echo your thoughts. McLaren, no matter what, you know, they haven't been bringing too many upgrades. I think they might be bringing a little bit uh, to Hungary. Um, we will cover that if that does happen, of course. But yeah, McLaren, they, they just keep getting the points on the board. Carlos Sainz had a fantastic weekend, fantastic qualifying. Of course, when his teammate did not have such a great weekend, <laughs> Lando nearly crashed on the way to the to the grid. Uh, he's made that quite public after the race, saying he nearly uh, crapped himself, which which wouldn't <laughs> have been uh, which not would which uh, wouldn't have been good because he did the same thing that um, Leclerc, Hamilton all did, Hulkenberg all did. He went out to that part of the track and nearly went the wall. So lucky, lucky Lando. Um, but yeah, of course, Lando retired from the race. Carlos got P5. Just once again, another solid um, result for McLaren in what looks like not to be their greatest weekend. They didn't have that. They weren't that great in terms of their pace. But I think at Hungary, they do have one of the, one of the better working cars in the midfield. So I'd expect them to be certainly at the front of the midfield again. How can you not say that? They quite simply are the best team in the midfield at the moment. And I think at um, Budapest, it's going to be another very strong weekend for McLaren, and I expect both drivers um, to be certainly scoring some points. Absolutely. And also, great news if you're a Carlos Sainz and McLaren fan. Carlos Sainz normally is very good at the Hungaro ring. If you look at his record, he's always in the top 10 whether it's qualifying or the race. So I expect Carlos Sainz to put in another great performance. And again, this guy on screen, he deserves a lot of credit. And uh, I'm, yeah, I've been giving him a lot of credit this season and he absolutely does deserve it. But now let's move on to Alfa Romeo, who finished P7 and P8 before they got a 30-second time penalty for illegal, I think... Um, some kind of illegal talk system for the start of the Grand Prix. And if you look at Kimi Raikkonen's start, I think you can pretty much, you know, see that, yeah, that definitely did help them. They had some kind of driver aid on the talk of their car that allowed them to have great starts. So, of course, they had to get that penalty, and, you know, that's just the way it is. But it did actually overshadow what was a great weekend for Alpha, because Kimi Raikkonen qualified in fifth, Raikkonen was in the top 10 for basically the entire Grand Prix and got a good finish in P7, even though it could have been better. Also, Antonio Giovinazzi, I thought, was very good on race day as well and deserves a lot of credit for his performance. But for Alpha, coming into Hungary, I think they're actually going to do better than I thought they would, say, a few weeks ago at this type of track. Because this team, you cannot doubt, is on a roll. They... Every weekend since Paul Ricard, they have 
always been in that top 10, whether it's Raikkonen or Giovinazzi, and I think they'll do it again. I think Kimi Raikkonen is most likely going to be in the top 10 because look at his record at the Hungara ring also. He has, when he was in a top car and was able to get podiums, he was basically on the podium at every Hungarian Grand Prix for a very long time. So I think Kimi Raikkonen will be one of the front runners in the midfield. Hopefully Antonio can get in there and maybe get into the top 10, say for qualifying on the race. But I think Alpha will continue their good form. I know their car is probably better suited to a power track than a high aero track, but I think because of their great form, because they definitely have improved the downforce of the car, because everyone at Alpha is performing so well, I think they will continue it into Hungary. Despite the penalty nib, uh, do you think Alpha will continue their great form at the uh, Hungara ring? Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's pretty nailed on that that Alpha will have a pretty once again a pretty solid weekend at the Hungara ring. You know they've been they've been very good the last couple of races. Have Alfa Romeo, of course. Um, with the reason why they got a thirty second time penalty was something to do um, with the clutch system not equaling the amount of torque that it needed to be within the engine within a certain time. Um, I watched an autosport video just before we started recording this podcast uh, explaining it, so you might want to go check that out. Basically, it's a traction control um regulation thing so okay they just um so yeah first time we've heard that a bit a long time remember the last time i've heard about traction control was when everyone accused red bull of running it in singapore yeah i'm um, on, on vettel's car <laughs> um so it's been quite some time since we heard about uh, traction control so quite interesting there so you, you might want to go and check that out if you if you guys are interested so yeah, it would have been a very good result, 7th and 8th for Alpha, but they don't get those points, unfortunately. And now Toro Rosso are ahead of them in the championship. And so, and a couple other teams have, have leaped from them as well, I believe. So it ended up being quite a costly mistake there by Alpha. So they'll be looking to bounce back strongly at their Hungar ring. And of course, you mentioned how good Kimi is at the Hungar ring. So I'd expect them to uh, to bounce back for sure at the Hungar ring and yeah, I think, I think the, the track does probably suit their car actually, you know, the middle sector and the last, maybe not the last sector in the middle sector, nice flowing part of the track. I think the alpha will be pretty good through that part of the section through that part of the track, but maybe not in the, maybe not so much in the third sector. And of course the first sector having the Ferrari engine qualifying is going to help massively. That is for sure. So yeah, I'd expect a solid result um, at the Hungar ring for Alfa Romeo. Maybe not as good as what they would have got at Hockenheim, but I don't think half of the teams will get as good a result um, for quite some time as what they did at um, Hockenheim. So I think, once again, that Alfa will be in the points. Yeah, and uh, if there is going to be only one car from Alfa in the points, then it is most likely going to be uh, Kimi Raikkonen. Now, let's go on to Haas F1, who, because of Alpha's penalties, uh, they got promoted to P7 and P8, which, of course, is a great result. That's their best result in Formula 1 for quite some time. I can't actually remember the last time they had such a great result uh, for that team. It, it was so, so good. But coming to Hungary, I don't think things are going to be as good because one, the car won't be as suited to this circuit as it would at Hockenheim. And also, if it stays dry, I think that tyre wear issue will kick in again. I think the reason Haas finished in the points was because it was wet for one and it was so chaotic they were able to gain on, you know, those cars, drivers having their issues. I think if we had a normal dry race at Hockenheim, I think Haas, even though Grosjean qualified on the third row, I think Haas would have finished outside the top 10 with both cars. I, I still don't think they have quite a good enough car on the dry. They did improve it in qualifying, but I still don't think the car is quite good enough yet. Very weird situation go, uh, going on at Haas because Grosjean is running the old Haas car from earlier in the season. And Kevin Magnussen is running the current one. And Roman is or was at Hockenheim quicker. So... 
Very, very weird, that is. And if they continue with that at the Hungara ring and grows on his head, then it just shows you how in Formula 1, even though you bring up graves, they don't necessarily work. Um, because, I mean, we saw Ferrari at the end of 2018 brought some upgrades to Singapore and their car got slower. So just because you bring an upgrade doesn't mean it is going to make your car faster. At times, it can actually halt you or make your car go even slower than it did before. But yeah, coming into Hungary, because it's more likely to be a dry weekend and, of course, less chaotic, I think Haas are probably going to miss out on a points finish. I will be, though, hoping for them in qualifying that they can kind of replicate their performance from Hockenheim. Because if they can, then it's clear that Haas are making improvements with their car, even if they do finish outside the points. Nib, with Haas, um, are you surprised by how weird the situation is with the old car and the new car and how things are you know, working out? No, not particularly, because Grosjean has done this before. I remember one of his years at Lotus, he did this, and then once he went back to the old car, he was outperforming his um, teammate as well at the time. So I'm not surprised by this. Roman, I think, gets very used to a car through pre-season testing in the first couple of races, and then he's just comfortable with that, and then if there's any changes to it, he gets unsettled. So I am shocked by this um, a little bit, though. Um, as and Haas did bring some upgrades to the Hungarian, sorry, not to the Hungarian, um, to Hockenheim. So they brought some new barge board updates and the new rear wings. So it it did work a little bit. Those new upgrades, you know, they seen they were a bit better, stronger all around over the weekend. But I do agree with you. If it was a dry race, there's no way they were scoring points. They their car is awful in the dry in a in race conditions, and at the track like Hungary where the tyres are very stressed um, during the race and there's high amounts of tyre wear usually, although with the harder compounded tyres, it's not as dramatic as what it used to be. I think they will, they really will struggle at the Hungar ring and I don't see them replicating that sort of good result and pretty solid weekend that they had at Hockenheim. Yeah, I think it will be pretty hard uh, for them to do. But now, let's move on to Toro Rosso, who of course... Got their first podium in 11 years at Hockenheim. Great result. And I'll be honest, I'm, I'll am i admit it, I was slightly emotional after the race because I was so happy for that team, that driver, for getting that podium. Toro Rosso, they rarely get talked about because they're such a meh kind of team at times in terms of their performance. But those mechanics are some of the most hard-working mechanics in Formula 1. Also remember that they used to be Minardi. I know it was a long, long time ago, but, you know, still, they work very, very hard for everything they get. And I think because of their hard work, especially over the last few years, where they have established themselves as a strong midfield runner, I think they deserved a podium sooner or later. And also, I think Daniel Kvyat did with his great drive, and also Albon as well at... Uh, at Hockenheim, I thought drove very, very well and was unlucky, uh, honestly, to finish behind his teammate because I think Albon was better during the Grand Prix because I think people forget that Albon started um, the Grand Prix at Hockenheim down in 16th place and got up in not that much time at all, up into 8th or 9th and then was at one point in P4 in that Grand Prix. So... Albon also was very good. But now, of course, we come to Hungary, where things are not going to be anywhere near as good, of course, for that team. Great, though, that they're now in P5 in the Constructors. Uh, but one thing I will say is that if you look at this track and the history Toro Rosso have had around this circuit, it's normally a good track. It really is normally a good track for this team. Normally, they're always in and around that top 10. Most of the time, they do finish in the points. And if they can finish in the points, then because of that great 23 points they collected at Hockenheim, who knows? Maybe they could finish behind McLaren and Renault in the Constructors for 2019. And that would be fantastic if they could. And it would be even better, of course, if they finished in the top five. But realistically, I don't think Toro Rosso have quite a good enough car. Let's also remember 
that at Hockenheim, Toro Rosso probably had the worst car in the midfield. So they're not great right now in terms of their dry weather car. But again, because of how they have been in the past around Hungary and because of how they have been around high aero tracks in 2019, such as, you know, Spain and Monaco, I think Toro Rosso are going to be good. I think they'll be in the points with one of their cars. Not both cars, but one of their cars. I think they will be in the points. And I think they will look quite a bit stronger than they did in the dry at Hockenheim before the chaos started on the Sunday nib. Uh, how happy for Toro Rosso and Daniel Kvyat were you after the race? And yeah, for Hungary, do you think they can score points again? Okay, well, I, I don't think I was quite as... Uh happy as you for, for Toro Rosso, you know, well done, good on you, but, you know, I don't have a, an emotional attachment to uh, for Toro Rosso for <laughs> some unbeknownst reason, but very happy for Danny Kivia. I remember at Singapore um, in the year that he got dropped from Toro Rosso, was it 20, yeah, 2017, and then Hartley replaced him the next race. He, he just looked absolutely done as a racing driver, was deprived of confidence, and it was a real shame to see because Danny Kvyat, you know, he'd got, he got two podiums before both in the Red Bull at Hungary um, and at uh, what other track and at China, of course, where of course he was famously called torpedo by Sebastian Vettel. But Danny Kvyat was, was a good driver as much, as much as I don't like to admit this, you know, he, he beat Ricardo in the championship um, at the year that they were teammates at Red Bull. Of course, Ricardo did have more reliability issues and stuff like that. But that doesn't excuse the fact that Kvyat did score more points than Ricardo that season. So Kvyat has always been a solid driver, quick driver, that's for sure. Just made too many mis... Well, he didn't even make too many mistakes. He made one mistake. And Red Bull found any little excuse that they could use to get Max Verstappen in the car. And, well, I don't blame them because, you know, <laughs> look, just look how good Max Verstappen is. He's certainly better than Danny Kvyat. But... The way he was treated was was very wrong at, by Red Bull, and it's great to see him back in the sport and doing well. Danny Kvyat has been has been very good so far this season. He's gone under the radar, and he just thoroughly deserved that P3. Great to see the Russian smiling again. Great to see him happy, and great to see him back in love with motorsport once more. I'm very happy for Danny Kvyat, and um, now moving on to their to their weekend now, which I think they're going to have. Pretty solid weekend at the Hungara rink. I, I do see them being one of the stronger teams in the midfield, if I'm, perf if I'm perfectly honest. I think that probably one of them will get into Q3 and then one of them will finish in the points. I don't, I don't know which driver because both of them have been driving very well so far this season. So I think it's going to be a very good weekend for Toro Rosso. I think, of course, they're not going to replicate it, what they just did at Hockenheim with a, with a podium, of course. That's not going to happen. but. Mm -hmm. I think that they're going to have another promising and, and strong weekend at Budapest. Yeah, I think they will. I think Toro also will have definitely a very, very good weekend. Let me just clear my throat. <clears throat> but now let's move on to the final midfield team, uh, Racing Point. Now, Racing Point also had a very good weekend in Hockenheim. Because our new updates came, not all of them, uh, another load of them are going to be coming at the Hungarian Grand Prix this weekend. But uh, yeah, load of new updates at Hockenheim and it did work for them because Stroll finally got out of Q1 and Perez finished in P8 in qualifying. So in the dry, Racing Point do have probably half a second more than they had before Hockenheim. And in the wet, even though Perez you know, made his mistake and crashed, he was looking good up until then and Stroll... I think was actually a lot better in the race than it was, you know, showing because, and, and Stroll said this uh, after the race, and it is true because if you look at the race as it went on, Stroll was a lot of the time on the wrong tyre at the wrong time. And the only time he was on the right tyre was when he went on to slips at the end and briefly was in the lead of the Grand Prix for the first time in his entire career. So... I think Stroll actually did very well to stay in the Grand Prix because also he went off at turn one when Norris uh, 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 retired from the race. 
I think Stroll actually drove a lot better than his race shows because, again, he was on the wrong tyres for a lot of that Grand Prix. So I think Stroll drove very, very well. Perez, I think if Perez didn't make his error, he probably would have been in that top of position around, you know, P3, P4, P5. But again, he made the error and he deserved to finish out the Grand Prix for it. But uh, coming to this weekend... It will be a better indicator, this Grand Prix for Racing Point, to see how these updates have worked for them. Because if they do look very strong in Hungary, then I think we can expect them to be one of the strongest midfield teams for the rest of the season. Because if they can consistently be in the top 10, as we've seen with Racing Point in the first four races of this season and in previous seasons... When you give Racing Point a chance of a good amount of points, they normally do take it. So I am very keen to see what Racing Point do in Hungary. I don't think they're going to be that good because I don't think Hungary, if you look at, you know, historically, Hungary has not been that good of a track for them. But also, I don't think a high aerodynamic grip track is exactly what their current car is suited to. So... I don't think Racing Point are going to be as good in the dry as they were at Hockenheim. But you never know what could happen. They could be better than I'm saying. Or, you know, rain could happen in qualifying and propel them up the grid. Who knows what could happen in Hungary. But uh, for Racing Point, Nib, are you keen to see uh, how those updates do for this team in Hungary? Yeah, of course. They brought um, some upgrades to the German Grand Prix, of course, not all of them, as you mentioned just before. And finally, finally, after I've been bagging on about it for quite some time now, Lance Stroll finally got into Q2. Round of applause for Lance. Well done, lad. But now moving on. Um, of course, it was in the lead the Great Grand Prix. Fantastic strategy called by Racing Point. Nearly got them a podium. Got them such a great result. P4 for Racing Point. I don't think many of us expected that. And Lance Stroll, once again, I've said this before, of course, he wasn't doing that great in the wet, but he is a good wet weather driver. That is for sure. Um, and then he did very well to keep behind Valtteri Bottas for as long as he did. He, he did very well to keep Bottas behind, frustrated Bottas so much that he forced Bottas. Well, Bottas also did was very much at fault for his mistake. But he frustrated Bottas. Bottas made the mistake. And yeah, well done to Lance Stroll. Of course, Sergio Perez went spinning around into the wall uh, just at the start of the... Uh, sorry, just at the end of the second sector, the, that right-hander. Um, I think... Jeez, I can barely remember that. I don't know how I remembered that. <laughs> I can barely remember that that happened. So that was disappointing for Sergio, who was in a good position at that stage of the race. I do remember... But yeah, it's step, certainly a step in the right direction for Racing Point at the German Grand Prix. And with their upgrades, of course, the second part of their base back car, and of course we've seen many times in the past their base back car at Hungary, usually delivers. So who knows? Racing Point, I think, could, could have a bit of a uh, surprise, very strong weekend at the Hungar Ring. Of course, we don't know yet because that we have not seen these upgrades. Um, so I think certainly the team to watch for this upcoming weekend is certainly Racing Point, and I think if those upgrades do work, they could have a uh, a very strong result, and maybe, just maybe, Lance Stroll can make into Q2 once again. Well, let's hope for that, and I will say, uh, Lance did well, for sure, to get into Q2. Um, I will say I think his qualifying still is lacking because, you know, Perez was in P8. But you cannot doubt in the race, uh, Stroll was was great, even when he was on tyres that were not the right tyres to be on. But yeah, I think racing point, as you said, Nib, if you're looking at the midfield, they're probably the team to watch uh, because of the updates they're bringing. And also, if they do work out really well for them, they're probably dark horses for a points finish in Hungary, and then of course at the back is going to be Williams. Robert Kubica finished in P10 in the points. Williams have scored points. That just tells you how chaotic that Grand Prix was at Hockenheim. I will say Kubica drove well to finish, you know, ahead of Russell. 
Uh, I still think Russell is the better driver because for most of the season, at least, Russell has been better. But when it mattered, yeah, Kubica got the points and well done to him. It is a shame for Russell, but, you know, when it mattered again, Russell was not ahead of his teammates, so there you go. But, yeah, coming into this Grand Prix, yeah, they're going to beat the back. This is not a good track for them because it's high aerodynamics and they are really, really lacking in that area. But now, let's get on to our early predictions for qualifying and the race in Hungary. I'll go first. So, getting pole position, in my opinion, for the first time in his career, will be Max Verstappen. Because I think the Red Bull car is very, very good. I think, you know, Red Bull and Honda, they're really, you know, meshing together well now. Max Verstappen is at the top of his game, and I think he can even improve on how he is at the moment for sure. And I think, yeah, they're going to have, you know, with the driver they have and the team and the car they have, I think they're going to have a very, very good weekend. And I think Max Verstappen will get pole position. In second will be Lewis Hamilton. He'll be very close to pole position, but I think he'll be on second on the grid. And third on the grid, I think you'd have to go for Valtteri Bottas because I think the car will be good enough to put him at least in the top three. Then on race day, I'm going for maybe a bit of a surprise podium. So, of course, I went for Verstappen to get pole, but winning the Grand Prix will be Lewis Hamilton, in my opinion, because even if he doesn't get pole... I think Lewis will be so keen, especially at the start and during the Grand Prix, to go and get the victory. And I think that the team will be so keen to go and get a victory, to send them onto the summer break in a good mood. And I think they will get that. And I think Lewis will provide uh, a great performance to get the race win. In second place will be Max Verstappen. Max will also drive very, very well. And Red Bull will have a good race. But I don't think they will have just about enough to get the win but it will be very close between those two maybe you know it'll be separated by two or three seconds at the end of the grand prix between uh, lewis hamilton and max verstappen and then in third i'm going to go for sebastian vettel and the ferrari because i think something will happen to valtteri bottas because i don't know valtteri if you look at his history at hungary he's never really had that good of a race really ever he finished in third in 2017, but again, it wasn't that good of a race um, for him. And I, I just think something will go wrong for Valtteri. And I think Sebastian, because he is definitely going to be more confident coming into this Grand Prix than he would be if this Grand Prix was following Silverstone, I think Vettel will get a surprise podium, whether that's because Valtteri has a poor start or has a reliability issue or gets took out. I don't know, but Vettel will finish for me in P3. So for the race, that's Hamilton, Verstappen, Vettel on the podium. Nib, for qualifying and the race, uh, what are you going for? Well, I'm going for for, for the usual boring uh, predictions, I, I think it must be said, but I, I think this is just what's going to happen. No more silly predictions like I've been doing the last couple of races. I think taking pole will be Lewis Hamilton. Second's going to be Max Verstappen. Probably third. Uh, going to go for Charles Leclerc. Going to go for Charles Leclerc in third. Um, then winning the race, I think it's going to be Lewis Hamilton. I just think he's going to bounce back in the way that the uh, the five-time world champion that he is will do. And then in second, I think it's going to be Max. I think it's going to be a race-long scrap between those two. I think that Max what, just won't be able to get past Hamilton. And I think that Hamilton will win the Grand Prix from Max in second. And in the third place, I think it's going to be Valtteri Bottas in third. I think Ferrari will struggle with a little bit more tie wear than Mercedes uh, in the Grand Prix. And I think that Bottas will get third. So those are my predictions for the Hungarian Grand Prix. I'm sure that, that those will probably change when it comes to the Sunday watch along. Um, but yeah, certainly looking forward, to, looking forward to the Hungarian Grand Prix. Although, um, I think these couple days rest and days off F1 is certainly going to help because I need to uh, need to refresh after what was an ex exhilarating German Grand Prix, that is for sure. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, when it comes to 
this weekend. I'm sure those predictions are going to be different based on, you know, uh, pace being different for what we expect or anything like that. But also, guys, make sure to put your predictions for qualifying and the race in the comments, and I'll try to respond to, uh, to as many comments as I can. But, guys, that is the end of today's podcast, previewing the 2019 Hungarian Grand Prix, the final Grand Prix before the summer break. Thank you guys for coming along and being part of this video and commenting down below and all that stuff. And again, uh, don't forget to subscribe uh, for more content like this as we do plenty of podcast episodes basically once a week on the channel. So don't forget to subscribe for that. Bottom right of the screen, you can do it right there or uh, go to my homepage, subscribe and hit the notifications bell. But Nib, thank you very much again for coming along. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely see you for this weekend. Of course, mate, great to be on the podcast as well. And of course, I'll see you guys all for the Sunday race watch along. Absolutely. But yeah, guys, that is what's coming up this weekend on the channel. We're going to have uh, Friday, the practice to watch along from 1.30 p.m. UK time till 3.30 p.m. UK time, or just after that. Then 1 p.m. on U uh, 1 p.m. UK time on Saturday will be the qualifying watch along until about 3.30 and then race day, of course, 10 past 1 p.m. UK time till about 4 o'clock p.m. UK time will be the race watch along. Cannot wait for it. I cannot wait to hopefully send off Formula One in the best way possible with another great Grand Prix in Hungary. But also, uh, don't forget, guys, again, to comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what you think will happen at this weekend's 2019 Hungarian Grand Prix. And also, don't forget to join the Discord server, link below in the description. And uh, that is the best place for notifications for my videos and streams. And also, that's the hardcore Chazer HDF1 community. And it is, on a race weekend, quite active. So if you want to join that community, the growing community over here, then make sure to do so, link below in the description. Also, follow me on Twitter at Chaz6110 and check out my website, has a hd.com for more content like this but guys until my next video and until the hungarian grand prix weekend that we're going to be kicking off on friday at 1 30 p.m uk time live it has been me chaz rage d goodbye <laughs>